Welcome again. In this session, we are reading John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Now, this is actually something I'm very excited about talking about because, you know, this passage is the go-to for a lot of sinners, okay? If anybody approaches somebody about their sin, you've probably heard this expression. Well, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. This is where they're getting that that phrase from this passage of scripture and i got a i got a couple good things to, to tell you here actually two major points that you need to know okay so we're going to get into this this is john chapter 8 verse 1. now what you got to realize here is that john chapter 8 verse 1 is actually half of a sentence it's it's the last half uh, of john chapter 7 verse 53. so john chapter 7 verse 53 says everyone went to his own house okay now you know let's let's take it all in context here you need to understand where where this uh, story is coming from where it's going to in the end of john chapter 7 they attempted to arrest jesus okay and they were unsuccessful they were very frustrated they uh, they couldn't arrest jesus and Nicodemus stood up and kind of said some things that was kind of pro-Jesus, and they were not happy with that whatsoever. Um, they were very frustrated. And so it ends off by saying in John chapter 7, verse 53, everyone went to his own house. Now, John chapter 8, verse 1 continues that. Everyone went to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now, very early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. He sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman taken in adultery. Having set her in the middle, they told him, Teacher, that's Rabbi, we found this woman in adultery, in the very act. Now, in our law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. That's Leviticus 20, verse 10, and Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. What then do you say about her? They said this, testing him, that they might have something to accuse him of. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he looked up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone at her. He again stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. They, when they heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning from the oldest even to the last. And again, in the context here, in cultural context, the oldest was always the first one. Okay, you got you know two people in the room, and the one is one is younger, one's the older one. The older one's always given the uh, the priority. Okay, you're the first one to go. Jesus was left alone with the woman where she was in the middle. Jesus, standing up, saw her and said, Woman, where are your accusers? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, sin no more. Now, once again, all of you need to know the two points that I have here about this whole passage, okay? Because you're going to come across people that are, going to, that are going to be saying this kind of thing like, well, you know, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And, you know, and well, Jesus didn't condemn the woman in adultery, did he? You know, he didn't stone her, so he's not going to stone me. So he's not going to condemn me either. See, this is where, this is where the sinner, they exploit this whole thing. They, they abuse this passage of Scripture, okay? Now, most of you have Bibles that have that has a little footnote, okay? If you were to look at a little, you know, there might be a little asterisk or a little a number, a little uh, superscript there by this whole passage of scripture. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's at uh, John chapter seven verse fifty three because that's where it starts, or John chapter eight verse eleven. You'll see the little footnote that says that most scholars or many scholars believe that this was not in the earliest manuscripts. In fact, it says this is not found in the earliest manuscripts. This whole passage of scripture from John chapter 7 verse 53 all the way through to John chapter 8 verse 11 is not in the oldest manuscripts. Okay? 
very, very important point to realize. Okay, you need to realize this. And I know that, you know some Christians would just deny it, say, "Well, no, no, no. I, I you know, I believe this particular, you know, uh, way of interpreting things. I, you know, uh, no, it's in my Bible. Therefore, it's 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 in the Bible." Okay, you got to be honest with yourself. Check it out. You know, it says that this can this is not found in the oldest manuscripts. Now, if that's true, and this is point number one, if it's true that it is not in the oldest manuscripts, if it's not in the earliest manuscripts, that means it was obviously added hundreds of years later, according to scholars, which means it was it's either quite inaccurate because hundreds of years you can get a lot of in inaccuracies in a story you know through the grapevine through hundreds of years so number one it was not found in the original manuscripts which means at the very least it could be inaccurate at the most it could be completely fabricated okay I, I, just be honest okay let's let's just be honest okay there isn't very many parts parts of the Bible that says this is this has been added at a later date. This is not found in the oldest manuscripts. There's not very many portions of scripture that set, that has that kind of footnote on it, okay? I know the end of uh, Mark chapter 16 is one part, okay? Th th that's kind of interesting as well. And I, I just want to throw this in there as my little footnote. Uh, John chapter 16 uh, also says, the very end of John chapter 16 says, that that's not found in the oldest manuscripts either. And isn't it interesting that John chapter 16, the end of it, talks about, you know, pick those who believe in me will, you know, pick up serpents and it will, they will, you know, the serpents will not harm them. And you know how many churches out there that are snake handling churches and people dying like, <laughs> you know, regularly because they're handling snakes and they, they handle snakes based upon Mark chapter 16, the end of Mark chapter 16, which is not in the earliest manuscripts, which is not found in the oldest manuscripts, which again could mean that it is inaccurate at the most because, the, you know, scholars, says, scholars say that it was added hundreds of years after the fact, just like this, this, just like this portion of scripture. Scholars say it was added hundreds of years after the fact. Now, these snake handling churches, people dying. Pff, how many times people died and went hospitalized, bitten by snakes, sick by, you know, all just because they put their faith in a portion of scripture that scholars tell you is not in the oldest manuscripts, which means it is inaccurate to say the least or totally fabricated to say the most. I implore you, I beg you, do not put your, do not go to the bank on a portion of scripture that is not 100% known to be in the earliest manuscripts, okay? Because it is, like I said, it's inaccurate at the least it can be inaccurate at the least, or it is totally fabricated at the most. Again, look into it. How many people died from handling snakes? How many people were hospitalized? How many people were sick because of handling snakes? Only, only because they put their faith in a portion of scripture, Mark chapter 16, which has been proven to be not in the oldest manuscripts. So likewise, how many people put their faith in this particular portion of scripture, John chapter 8, you know, uh, the woman taken in the act of adultery, uh, he who is without sin cast the first stone. They put their faith in that portion of scripture. They basically put the head of their soul on the chopping block because of that, because of this portion of scripture, which likewise, just like the snake handling scripture, is not found in the oldest manuscripts. It's not found in the earliest manuscripts, which again, I can't emphasize this enough. It's inaccurate at the most. It can be inaccurate at the, at the least, I should say. Excuse me. Or it is completely fabricated at the most, okay? So that's point number one. Don't go to the bank, spiritually speaking, on a portion of scripture that could be fabricated, okay? Don't do it. If you're going to go to the bank on, on scripture, go to the bank on scriptures that are found from the earliest to the latest, all the way through all the all the different different manuscripts that we have, okay? 
That's point number one. It could be completely fabricated because of the fact it's not found in the oldest manuscripts. Number two, let's just say, let's just say, let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say this portion of scripture is accurate to the T, okay? This portion of scripture is completely and absolutely accurate in everything that it says, okay? You know, it is exactly what John wrote, okay? Let's just say that. Let's just, let's just say that, okay? If it is, that gives you absolutely no room for your excuse of sinning, okay? That gives you absolutely no excuse to sin. Why? Because Jesus said here in this portion of scripture to the woman, go and sin. How many more times? Um, how much more tolerance does Jesus have here? He said, go and sin no more. No more. I know a lot of you would say, well, it's impossible for humans not to sin. Says who? If it is impossible, Jesus here is being a ruthless tyrant, barking out commands that nobody can obey. Now, that's just the truth. Now, is Jesus reasonable here when he commands the woman to sin no more? Like zero tolerance, no more? Or is he a ruthless, unreasonable tyrant barking out commands to people that is impossible for them to obey? Okay? You, you, make, you make the choice, okay? You judge, okay? I say that it is possible to live without sin. Paul said it in Romans chapter 6. How can you, being dead to sin, live in it any longer? I mean, you're dead to sin. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That doesn't give any room for sin. You know, give it the benefit of the doubt that this is a true story and it's it, everything is true according to what's, what we have here in um, John chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus did not say, go and, I know you're human. I know you all sin all the time, every day. So just try your best not to sin or just do your best, okay? I'm not expecting you to do anything more than just, just try to be good. He didn't say that. He didn't say, go and try not to sin. I know that it's, it's hard, but try not to. He didn't say that. He said, go and sin no more. So that's point number two. Go and sin no more. Point number one is, if you look at it in a very honest and open mind, it could be a completely fabricated story. It's not in the original text. Okay, it's not in the original oldest manuscripts. Okay. Point number two is, if it is still, you know, let's say, for example, you believe that it is uh, the real deal, that it's a true story, then that still puts you on the hook to sin no more. Because Jesus said, go and sin no more. So there you have it. Now you know what to say to those people who say, he who is without sin, cast the first stone.